Hi, welcome to Electrical Info YouTube channel. Subscribe our channel and share. Today we learn about electrical substation components and their workings. The electricity substation is a network of electrical equipment which is connected in a structured way in order to supply electricity to end consumers. There is numerous electrical substation components like outgoing and incoming circuitry each of which having its circuit breakers, isolators, transformers, and bus bar system etc. for the smooth functioning of the system. The power system is having numerous ingredients such as distribution, transmission, and generation systems and substations act as a necessary ingredient for operations of the power system. The substations are entities from which consumers are getting their electrical supply to run their loads while required power quality can be delivered to the customers by changing frequency and voltage levels etc. The electricity substation designs are purely dependent on the need, for instance, a single bus or complex bus system etc. Moreover, the design is also dependent on the application as well, for instance, indoor substations, generation substations, transmission substations, pole substations, outdoor substation, converter substation, and switching substation etc. There is a need of collector substation as well in cases of large power generating systems e.g. multiple thermal and hydropower plants connected together for transfer of power to a single transmission unit from numerous co-located turbines. The following are major electrical components of substations and their working. Each component functions are explained in detail with machinery, substation co. MP Onant's diagram is also given above for your reference. Next we learn about list of electrical substation equipment. 1. Instrument transformers. 2. Current transformer. 3. Potential transformer. 4. Conductors. 5. Insulators. 6. Isolators. 7. Bus bars. 8. Lightning arresters. 9. Circuit breakers. 10. Relays. 11. Capacitor banks. 12. Batteries. 13. Wave trapper. 14. Switchyard. 15. Metering and indication instruments. 16. Equipment for carrier current. 17. Prevention from surge voltage. 18. The outgoing feeders. Next we learn about instrument transformer. An instrument transformer is a type of transformer that is designed to measure or protect electrical power systems. It is used to isolate, reduce, and accurately measure high voltage or high current electrical signals, making them safe and manageable for use in instruments, meters, relays, and other control equipment. There are two main types of instrument transformers. Current transformers, CTs, and voltage transformers, VTs. Current transformers are used to measure high current levels and provide a reduced current output that is proportional to the original current. Voltage transformers, on the other hand, are used to measure high voltage levels and provide a reduced voltage output that is proportional to the original voltage. Instrument transformers are essential components of electrical power systems, particularly in the fields of protection and metering. They help to ensure the safety and accuracy of the measurements and controls that are used to operate the system. Next we learn about current transformer. An electrical current transformer, CT, is a type of instrument transformer that is used to measure high levels of electrical current in power systems. CTs work on the principle of electromagnetic induction, where a changing magnetic field induces a voltage in a conductor. The primary winding of a CT is connected in series with the conductor carrying the high current that needs to be measured. The secondary winding of the CT is connected to a measuring instrument, such as a meter or a relay and provides a reduced current output that is proportional to the original current. The ratio of the primary to secondary windings determines the amount of current reduction. CTs are commonly used in power systems to measure and monitor the current flowing through transmission lines, distribution lines, and electrical equipment such as generators, transformers, and motors. They are also used for protective relaying where they detect and isolate faults in the system by sensing abnormal current levels and triggering protective devices. It is important to note that CTs are designed to operate at a specific frequency and current range, and care must be taken to ensure that they are properly selected and installed for the specific application. Additionally, CTs must be calibrated periodically to ensure their accuracy over time. Next we learn about Potential Transformer. A potential transformer, PT, 
is a type of instrument transformer that is used to measure high voltage levels in power systems. PTs work on the same principle as current transformers, using electromagnetic induction to provide a reduced voltage output that is proportional to the original voltage. The primary winding of a PT is connected in parallel with the conductor carrying the high voltage that needs to be measured. The secondary winding of the PT is connected to a measuring instrument, such as a voltmeter or a relay, and provides a reduced voltage output that is proportional to the original voltage. The ratio of the primary to secondary windings determines the amount of voltage reduction. PTs are commonly used in power systems to measure and monitor the voltage levels of transmission lines, distribution lines, and electrical equipment such as transformers and circuit breakers. They are also used for protective relaying, where they detect and isolate faults in the system by sensing abnormal voltage levels and triggering protective devices. It is important to note that PTs, like CTs, are designed to operate at a specific frequency and voltage range, and must be properly selected and installed for the specific application. They must also be periodically calibrated to ensure their accuracy over time. Additionally, proper safety precautions must be taken when working with high voltage equipment, including PTs. Next we learn about transmission conductor. A transmission conductor is a type of electrical conductor that is used to transmit high voltage electrical power over long distances. Transmission conductors are typically made of aluminum, aluminum alloy, or steel reinforced aluminum, and are designed to be lightweight, strong, and resistant to environmental factors such as wind, ice, and corrosion. Transmission conductors are typically categorized based on their cross-sectional area and the number of individual wires that make up the conductor. For example, a common transmission conductor is the ACSR, aluminum conductor steel reinforced, which consists of a central steel core surrounded by layers of aluminum wires. Transmission conductors are used to transmit power from generating stations to distribution networks, where the voltage is stepped down for use in homes and businesses. They are also used to interconnect different regions of the power grid, allowing for the transfer of power over long distances and the balancing of load between different areas. The design and installation of transmission conductors is subject to strict standards and regulations, as they must be able to operate safely and reliably under a wide range of conditions. Factors such as conductor sag, wind loading, and ice buildup must be carefully considered during the design process, and appropriate measures must be taken to mitigate the effects of these factors on the conductor's performance. Next we learn about electrical insulators. Electrical insulators are materials that resist the flow of electric current. They are used to separate electrical conductors from each other or from other materials to prevent electrical energy from flowing in unintended directions. Insulators are critical components of electrical systems, as they help to ensure safety and reliability. There are several types of electrical insulators. Porcelain insulators. Porcelain is a type of ceramic that is commonly used to make insulators for high voltage power lines. Porcelain insulators are durable and able to withstand high temperatures, making them suitable for use in harsh outdoor environments. Glass insulators. Glass is another material that is commonly used to make insulators. Glass insulators are typically used for lower voltage applications, such as on telegraph or telephone poles. Polymer insulators. Polymer insulators are made from materials such as silicone or polyethylene, and are becoming increasingly popular due to their lightweight, durability, and ease of installation. Polymer insulators are commonly used for distribution lines and other lower voltage applications. Composite insulators. Composite insulators are made from a combination of materials typically including fiberglass or carbon fiber and a polymer matrix. Composite insulators are lightweight, strong, and resistant to environmental factors such as UV radiation, making them suitable for use in harsh outdoor environments. Ceramic insulators. Ceramic insulators are typically used in applications where high temperatures are a concern, such as in furnaces or in high-voltage power transmits. Ion. Ceramic insulators are able to withstand high temperatures and are highly resistant to thermal shock. In addition to these common types of insulators, there are also specialized insulators designed for specific applications, such as insulators for use in high temperature environments or for use in explosive or hazardous areas. Next we learn about isolators. 
Isolators, also known as disconnect switches, are electrical devices used to disconnect a section of a power system from the rest of the system. Isolators are typically used in combination with circuit breakers or fuses to provide additional protection for electrical equipment and personnel. Isolators work by physically opening a gap in the electrical circuit, preventing the flow of electrical current. Unlike circuit breakers, which are designed to interrupt the flow of current automatically in the event of an overload or short circuit, isolators are manually operated and are used primarily for maintenance purposes or to isolate a section of the system for repair or replacement. Isolators are commonly used in high-voltage power transmission and distribution systems, where they are used to disconnect equipment such as transformers, circuit breakers, or bus bars from the rest of the system for maintenance or repair. Isolators are also used in industrial applications to isolate machines or equipment for servicing or repair. There are several types of isolators, including air brake isolators. Air brake isolators are the simplest type of isolator and consist of two conductive blades that are physically separated to interrupt the flow of current. Isolating switches. Isolating switches are similar to air brake isolators, but are designed to handle higher currents and have a higher braking capacity. Load brake switches. Load brake switches are similar to isolating switches, but are designed to be able to break a load current. Pantograph isolators. Pantograph isolators are used in high voltage power systems and consist of two conductive a. RMS that are mechanically linked to maintain a constant distance between them. Isolators must be operated with caution, as they can pose a hazard if not operated correctly. Proper safety procedures must be followed when isolating equipment, including the use of personal protective equipment and following lockout, tagout procedures to ensure that equipment remains isolated and de-energized during maintenance or repair activities. Next we learn about bus bars. Electrical bus bars are conductive bars or rods that are used to distribute electrical power in a power system. Bus bars are typically made of copper or aluminum and can be designed in various shapes and sizes depending on the application. Bus bars are commonly used in electrical switchgear and distribution systems to provide a centralized point for distributing electrical power to various equipment and circuits. They are typically installed in an enclosure or panel and are used to connect incoming power sources, such as transformers or generators, to the various circuits or loads within the system. Bus bars are often preferred over individual wires for distributing power because they offer several advantages, including low impedance. Bus bars have a low impedance, which means they can carry high currents with minimal voltage drop, resulting in higher efficiency and reduced power losses. High reliability. Bus bars are less susceptible to damage from environmental factors such as heat, moisture, or vibration compared to individual wires resulting in higher reliability and longer service life. Simplified installation. Bus bars can be prefabricated in a factory and then easily installed on site, reducing installation time and cost. There are several types of bus bars used in electrical systems, including single bus bar system. In a single bus bar system, a single bus bar is used to distribute power to all equipment and circuits within the system. Double bus bar system. In a double bus bar system, two parallel bus bars are used, with one bus bar being the primary bus and the other bus bar being the backup or redo. Endant bus. Ring bus bar system. In a ring bus bar system, the bus bars are arranged in a circular or ring-shaped configuration, with multiple connections to each piece of equipment to ensure redundancy and reliability. Segregated phase bus bar system. In a segregated phase bus bar system, each phase of the power distribution is separated by an insulating barrier to improve safety and reliability. Overall, bus bars are a critical component of electrical power systems, providing a centralized point for distributing power and ensuring the safe and reliable operation of the system. Next we learn about lightning arresters. Lightning arresters, also known as surge arresters or lightning protectors, or electrical devices used to protect electrical equipment and systems from overvoltage transients caused by lightning strikes or other sources of electrical surges. Lightning arresters work by diverting the high voltage current caused by a lightning strike away from the equipment or system being protected, thereby preventing damage or failure. 
Lightning arresters are typically installed on electrical power transmission and distribution systems, telecommunication systems, and other critical electrical systems that are susceptible to damage from lightning strikes or other sources of surges. They are installed in parallel with the equipment or system being protected, and typically consist of a gap between two electrodes, with a nonlinear resistor in between. When a surge or overvoltage occurs, the nonlinear resistor rapidly increases its resistance thereby limiting the current and voltage that can pass through the gap. This diversion of current prevents the surge from reaching and damaging the equipment or system being protected. There are several types of lightning arresters, including silicon carbide arresters, SIC. These arresters use a silicon carbide material as the nonlinear resistor. They are typically used in medium and high voltage systems. Metal oxide arresters, MOA. These arresters use a metal oxide varistor, MOV, as the nonlinear resistor. They are commonly used in low, medium, and high voltage systems. Gas discharge tube arresters, GDT. These arresters use a gas filled tube as the nonlinear resistor. They are COMO, NLY, used in low voltage systems. Overall, lightning arresters are a critical component of electrical systems, providing protection against the damaging effects of lightning strikes and other sources of electrical surges. Proper installation and maintenance of lightning arresters are essential for ensuring the safe and reliable operation of electrical equipment and systems. Next we learn about circuit breakers. A substation is an essential component of an electrical power system, which transforms the high voltage transmission power into a low voltage distribution power that can be supplied to homes and businesses. Within a substation, circuit breakers play a critical role in protecting the system from faults such as short circuits or overloads, which can cause damage to equipment and disrupt power supply. A circuit breaker is a device that automatically interrupts an electric circuit to protect against damage from an overload or short circuit. It works by detecting a fault and quickly opening the circuit to prevent further damage. There are several types of circuit breakers available, including air circuit breakers, oil circuit breakers, vacuum circuit breakers, and gas circuit breakers. The type of circuit breaker used in a substation depends on the voltage level, the current capacity, and other specific requirements of the system. In a substation, circuit breakers are typically used in high voltage applications, such as the transmission and distribution of power. They are installed between the power source and the load to provide protection against faults that can cause damage to the equipment or interrupt the power supply. The circuit breakers are typically controlled by a protection relay which monitors the current and voltage levels in the system and activates the circuit breaker in case of a fault. Substation circuit breakers are designed to handle high voltage levels and high currents, making them a critical component in ensuring the safety and reliability of the power system. They are typically housed in a metal enclosure to protect them from the environment and to contain any arcs or sparks that may occur when the circuit is interrupted. Maintenance and testing of circuit breakers are critical to ensuring their proper operation and longevity, and they are subject to regular inspections and replacement as necessary. Next we learn about Electrical Protection Relays. Electrical protection relays are devices that protect electrical power systems from damage and failure caused by abnormal conditions such as overloads, short circuits, and faults. These relays are critical components in power systems, as they help to prevent damage to equipment and ensure the safe and reliable operation of the system. Protection relays typically monitor various parameters of the power system, such as voltage, current, frequency, and power quality. If an abnormal condition is detected, the protection relay will send a signal to a circuit breaker, which will trip and isolate the affected section of the power system. This helps to prevent the spread of the abnormal condition and minimize damage to equipment and the power system. There are several types of electrical protection relays, each designed to protect against specific types of faults and abnormal conditions. Some of the most common types of protection relays include overcurrent relays. These relays monitor the current flowing through a circuit and trip the circuit breaker if the current exceeds a predetermined threshold. Differential relays. These relays compare the current flowing into a section of the power system with the current flowing out of the same section. If there is a difference in the currents, it indicates a fault, and the relay will trip the circuit breaker. Distance relays. These relays use the time taken for a fault to travel from the relay location to the fault location to determine the distance of the fault. 
If the fault is within the protection zone, the relay will trip the circuit breaker. Overvoltage uh. ND undervoltage relays. These relays monitor the voltage level of the power system and trip the circuit breaker if the voltage exceeds or falls below a predetermined threshold. Frequency relays. These relays monitor the frequency of the power system and trip the circuit breaker if the frequency deviates from the standard operating range. In summary, electrical protection relays play a critical role in protecting electrical power systems from damage and failure caused by abnormal conditions. They are designed to monitor specific parameters of the power system and trip the associated circuit breaker if a fault or abnormal condition is detected. Different types of protection relays are used for different types of faults and abnormal conditions, ensuring that the power system is protected from a wide range of potential issues. Next we learn about Capacitor banks. Electrical capacitor banks are devices that are used to improve the power factor of electrical power systems. Power factor is a measure of how effectively electrical power is being used in a system, and is calculated as the ratio of the real power, measured in watts, to the apparent power, measured in volt amperes. A low power factor can result in increased energy consumption, reduced system efficiency, and higher utility bills. A capacitor is an electrical component that stores energy in an electric field. When a capacitor is connected in parallel to an inductive load, such as a motor or transformer, it can help to improve the power factor of the system by offsetting the reactive power, measured in volt amperes reactive, or VARs, of the load. This reduces the apparent power required from the utility, and allows more real power to be delivered to the load. Electrical capacitor banks are essentially groups of capacitors that are connected in parallel and switched on or off as needed to improve the power factor of the system. The capacitor bank is typically connected to the power system through a switch or contactor, and is controlled by a power factor correction controller that monitors the power factor of the system and switches the capacitors on or off as needed to maintain the desired power factor. The benefits of using electrical capacitor banks include improved power factor, Capacitor banks can help to improve the power factor of the system, reducing energy consumption and improving system efficiency. Reduced utility bills. A higher power factor means that less apparent power is required from the utility, reducing the cost of electricity. Increased capacity. By reducing the reactive power of the load, capacitor banks can increase the capacity of the electrical system and allow more real power to be delivered to the load. Improved voltage stability. Capacitor banks can help to stabilize voltage levels in the power system by reducing voltage drops and fluctuations. Capacitor banks are used in a wide range of applications, from small commercial buildings to large industrial facilities. They are available in a variety of configurations and sizes to meet the specific requirements of each application. In summary, electrical capacitor banks are devices that help to improve the power factor of electrical power systems. They are designed to store energy in an electric field and offset the reactive power of inductive loads, reducing energy consumption, improving system efficiency, and reducing utility bills. Capacitor banks are a cost-effective and reliable solution for improving the performance of electrical power systems. We learn about batteries. A substation battery, also known as a backup battery, is a type of battery used in power substations to provide emergency power during power outages or other disruptions. Substations are critical components of the electrical grid, used to control and distribute power from power plants to consumers. Substations often rely on the electrical grid for power, but if the grid fails or becomes unstable, a backup power source is needed to keep the substation running. This is where the substation battery comes in. It is designed to provide reliable backup power to critical substation equipment until power can be restored. Substation batteries are typically large, high-capacity batteries that can deliver power for hours or even days. They are typically lead-acid batteries, which are well suited to this application due to their durability, low cost, and ability to deliver high current for short periods of time. However, other types of batteries, such as lithium-ion batteries, may also be used in certain applications. In addition to providing backup power during outages, substation batteries may also be used to help stabilize the grid by providing additional power during periods of high demand. 
This is known as grid energy storage, and it is becoming an increasingly important application for large-scale batteries like those used in substations. Overall, substation batteries are an essential component of the electrical grid, helping to ensure that critical equipment stays online during power outages and other disruptions. Next we learn about Wave Trapper. An electrical wave trapper is a passive electronic component that is used to filter and control the flow of high-frequency signals in electrical circuits. It is also known as a wave trap or a high-pass filter. The main function of an electrical wave trapper is to prevent high-frequency signals from flowing through a circuit while allowing low-frequency signals to pass through. It does this by providing a path of high impedance to high-frequency signals, effectively trapping them and preventing them from passing through the circuit. The basic design of an electrical wave trapper consists of a capacitor and an inductor connected in series. The capacitor allows low frequency signals to pass through the circuit, while the inductor blocks high frequency signals. Together, the capacitor and inductor act as a filter, allowing only certain frequencies to pass through while blocking others. Electrical wave trappers are used in a variety of applications, including power distribution systems, communication systems, and electronic devices. In power distribution systems, wave trappers are used to control the flow of high-frequency signals that can cause interference with other equipment. In communication systems, wave trappers are used to filter out unwanted frequencies and ensure that only the desired signal is received. In electronic devices, wave trappers are used to protect sensitive components from damage caused by high-frequency signals. Overall, electrical wave trappers are an important component in many electrical and electronic systems, providing a way to filter and control the flow of high-frequency signals and protect sensitive equip. Meant from damage. Next we learn about switchyard. A switchyard, also known as a substation, is an electrical system that is used to control and distribute electricity from the power plant to the end users. It is a critical component of the power transmission and distribution system, and it serves as an interface between the power plant and the distribution system. The switchyard contains various electrical equipment that helps to manage the flow of electricity. This includes transformers, circuit breakers, bus bars, disconnect switches, and protective relays. These components work together to convert high voltage power from the power plant to lower voltages suitable for distribution to homes, businesses, and industries. Transformers are used to step up or step down the voltage of the electricity to match the requirements of the transmission and distribution lines. Circuit breakers and disconnect switches help to protect the equipment and ensure the safety of the workers by interrupting the flow of electricity in case of faults or overloads. Bus bars are the conductors that distribute the power to different areas of the switchyard, and protective relays are used to detect faults and quickly isolate them from the rest of the system. Overall, the switchyard is a critical component of the power system that plays a crucial role in maintaining the reliability and stability of the electrical grid. It allows for the efficient and safe transmission and distribution of electricity, enabling us to power our homes, businesses, and industries. Next we learn about metering and indication instruments. Electrical metering and indication instruments are devices that are used to measure and display electrical parameters in an electrical system. These instruments are commonly used in power distribution systems, industrial automation systems, and electrical testing applications. The main function of electrical metering instruments is to measure electrical parameters such as voltage, current, power, energy, and frequency. The measurements are then displayed on the instrument's screen or transmitted to a control system for further processing. Indication instruments, on the other hand, provide a visual display of the measured parameters allowing operators to monitor the electrical system in real time. There are various types of electrical metering and indication instruments, each designed to measure a specific electrical parameter. Some examples of these instruments include digital multimeter, used to measure voltage, current, resistance, and continuity. Clamp meter, used to measure current without breaking the circuit. Power quality analyzer, used to measure voltage and current harmonics, power factor, and flicker. Energy meter, used to measure the energy consumed in an electrical system. Frequency meter, used to measure the frequency of an electrical signal. Phase sequence indicator, used to identify the sequence of the three-phase power supply. Voltmeter, used to measure the voltage in an electrical system. 
In addition to these instruments, there are also advanced electrical metering and indication systems that incorporate multiple sensors and provide a comprehensive view of an electrical system. These systems are often used in complex industrial processes that require precise monitoring and control of electrical parameters. Overall, electrical metering and indication instruments play a critical role in ensuring the safe and efficient operation of electrical systems. By providing accurate and timely measurements of electrical parameters, these instruments help operators to identify and address issues before they become serious problems.